Hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> if I could just have your attention for one moment. <laughs> Thank you. So our event's going to get started in just about five minutes. Uh, before then, I encourage you now to take your seats, get out your phones, and head on over to our website, wcupa.edu slash go. We'd like you to take a look at a few images and cast your votes for ones that you think are different from the others. Thank you. All right, now before we get started, can we please take a moment to make sure our phones are away and silence? Thank you. My name is Rodney Kaplan, and I'm a fourth year student here at beautiful Westchester University, pursuing a degree in political science, and I'm very glad you could join us for our welcome back to WCU event. As president of the Westchester University Student Government Association, I am very pleased to be here and to have this cool opportunity to join in on an important community conversation about Westchester University. I look forward to hearing from President Fiorentino today, as well as other members of the university and local community. But before, I would like to thank a few special guests who are joining us today. We are honored to have with us a variety of university partners, friends, and even family members, such as my own wonderful mother, Patricia Kaplan, and grandmother, Marianne Merritt, who ventured all the way from North New Street to be here with us today. <laughs> I would now like to take the opportunity to recognize new faculty and staff members who recently joined Westchester University in the past year. New faculty and staff, would you now please rise to be recognized? Once again, welcome everyone to Westchester University. And now I would like to introduce our university president, Dr. Chris Fiorentino. Thanks, Rodney. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. In the last 21 months as your university president, and nine months prior to that as interim president, I've been struck time and time again by the can-do attitude and shared sense of purpose of WCU's 1,896 faculty and staff members. I see it in small but significant ways in the faculty members who willingly take on yet another club advisor role, and in the staffers who say goodbye to graduating work-study students with cards and flowers. I see it in large ways, too, such as when administrators and faculty fight to get new and necessary academic programs approved and after that to get them up and running. Or when staffers see a need, like the need that existed for a resource pantry on our campus, and then they do what it takes to make it happen. From my first day in the president's office, I've been determined not to let the urgent phone calls, unceasing meetings, and endless emails suck me into a black hole in which I'd never come out and see the light of day. <laughs> All these things I do in my office are absolutely essential. But so too is being out on the quad, talking to our students, hearing their concerns, or simply saying hello. It's essential too for me to spend time with WCU employees so I can better understand the jobs that you do and the best ways for the university to support you in your work. For the past 15 months, I've been setting aside time to spend the better part of a workday shadowing different university employees. including our marching band director, the new student programs director, a construction foreman, the women's softball coach, a custodian, and a pair of admission counselors. It's been enjoyable. What's not to like about getting to lead the band in the fight song at Farrell Stadium? Or giving my rusty pitching arm a little workout with our softball players? But beyond the fun, these job shadows have been illuminating. Each time I've learned something about this university, about these employees, and their job responsibilities that has informed me in my work. We all bring such different talents, skill sets, and personalities to our jobs. 
what Carlos Esteva brings to the table to do his custodial job well and keep Sykes gleaming is indeed different from what Diane Loki contributes to keep our softball team winning season after season. Yet when I watch Carlos, dubbed the mayor of Sykes for his gregarious nature, and Diane, a quieter but no less dynamic presence working at their jobs, I see a common bond. Both of these employees care deeply about the well-being of our students. Both have had alumni come back to campus years later to seek them out and thank them for the difference they made in their lives. You are all an integral part of the community of educators who make up Westchester University. We are all in this together. These are very challenging times in higher education. I was in Harrisburg last week meeting with the new chancellor, his staff, and the other presidents. And we were poring over demographic challenges, funding challenges, and other related challenges that are serious threats to our future. Our competition is not standing still in the face of declining enrollments. Many colleges and universities are cutting their tuition in response to changing demographics. WCU has been thriving as an institution. Our enrollment continues to grow. Our reputation is stellar. But this is not a time to rest on our laurels. Rather, it's a time to seize control of our destiny with purposeful action. We must continue to do the things that have propelled us to where we are today and put us in this position of prominence. We also must be bold and explore novel and innovative approaches to student success. I'm reminded of the words of Helen Keller, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. Every time I do a job shadow, invite a group of employees to lunch, drop by an office, or simply take an early morning run with my wife around campus, I gain new appreciation for the 24-7 efforts that keep our university going strong. It is your energy and enthusiasm, as well as your commitment to the success of our students, that drives Westchester University to even greater heights. Thank you for everything you do. Every day when I walk into my office, one of the first things I see is this wooden sign. For those in the back, you can see it up there. It holds a place of pride in the middle of my bookcase, and it says, don't forget, take some risks. I was given this sign years ago, but long before it came into my possession, I considered these words to live by. When you have a job that's working well for you, it can be tempting to hope that nothing ever changes. When you have a university that's working well, it can be equally tempting to keep things the same. But we don't get anywhere by staying in one place. As Benjamin Franklin once said, when you're finished changing, you're finished. Change inevitably brings growing pains, but the risks of standing still are far greater than those of moving forward in a new direction. Today, we will be spotlighting people across campus who had the courage to get out of their comfort zones and take risks to advance this university and its mission. Let's get started. I'd like to introduce Dr. Jeff Osgood, Senior Vice Provost and Dean of the School of Interdisciplinary and Graduate Studies and a Professor of Public Policy and Administration. Dr. Osgood will be talking to us about the university's learning priority of the new strategic plan. He will also be joined on stage by Dr. Tabitha Adkins, Associate Provost for Student Success and Founding Dean of the University College, as, do, as well as Dr. Shannon Merkich, an Associate Professor of English and a coordinator of the First Year Experience Program, which is being piloted now and expanded to include all first year students in 2019. Thank you, Rodney. If there's one thing true about academic affairs, it's that we aren't afraid to take risks. We accept change and continuous improvement as a way of life. And both of these things are part of what it means to be committed to student success. Tabitha, tell us a little bit about University College and why it's transforming the way we interact with one of our largest student populations. I'd be glad to. So I see the creation of the University College at Westchester as the university's way of sort of taking a risk and stopping and not saying, you know, are students ready for college, but saying instead, are we ready for students to come to the university? The reward for this risk is a university college that is sharply focused on three ideals, access, exploration, and interdisciplinarity. So we take our access mission quite seriously here at Westchester University. 
In fact, nearly 20% of our incoming students have found a home here through one of our access programs. As a first-generation student myself, who participated in the Upward Bound in high school and took over seven years to complete my bachelor's degree, I was no help to their six-year graduation rates. <laughs> The access work of University College is particularly important to me. So, Tabitha, can you tell us a little bit more about this work? Yes, University College is home to a number of student support services that help provide access to our students, such as the Office of Services for Students with Disabilities, or OSSD, and the Learning Assistance and Resource Center, the LARC, which are making incredible use of both technology and old-fashioned one-on-one interaction with students to help support their success. The Academic Development Program is another one of our programs that does this, ADP, which features, in my opinion, one of the most dynamic and engaging programs of its kind in the Commonwealth. And we also host the Summer Bridge Program, which gives students and select majors an opportunity to come in the summer before they start their first year and get a head start. All right, so tell me how University College would help a student like me, who causes mother great anxiety by changing his major more times than he recalls, cares to recall. <laughs> So we are the College of Exploration. We are home to exploratory studies major, what used to be called pre-major pre studies, for students working to determine which major they think they should choose for their future. And we're also the College of Interdisciplinarity. We're the home to liberal studies major and the professional studies concentration, where students can help build degrees that fit their view of what they can do to help to solve the problems of tomorrow. That's fantastic. Thanks, Tabitha, and thanks to everybody in University College for all that amazing work. So Shannon, we've done a lot of things at Westchester University that can be described as high risk, high reward. And the first year experience course is intended to have a transformational impact on our students in the first semester. So tell us about your involvement in that program. Well, I've been teaching first year students for over 20 years. And I was absolutely thrilled to be invited uh, to be a faculty member in the four credit pilot of the first year experience course. But I have to say, I've never team taught before and I've never, <laughs> I'm even nervous now, um, and um, I've never taught in, a, taught in a large lecture. So excited, intrigued, but also a little bit scared. All right, so tell everybody here what the first year experience looks like for our students. Each of the sections of the first year experience course pilot um, is made up of five professors, and we have 175 students in a lecture class. And then each of those professors has a breakout class of 35 to 38 students. Um, as President, President Fiorentino says, I'm a little bit scared here, but I know that there's great power in taking risks, in moving forward, and in challenging oneself and others. We've been working to develop a engaging experience, hence first year experience, um, that could change the way that first-year students approach learning. We're introducing our students to many people across the university, and we're already seeing connections that these students are making with faculty, staff, and other students. Probably most exciting is working with master teachers from across the university. And this has given both students and faculty a greater understanding of disciplines outside their own personal interests, which makes an engaging and richer learning experience for all of us. We're really encouraging our students to step outside their comfort zones. We're encouraging them to reach out to different campus resources and to engage in learning techniques that may be new to them. Even this early in the semester, we're watching these students, our first year students, become increasingly independent and increasingly self-assured learners. So thank you, Tabitha and Shannon, for sharing some of the things we're doing to enhance learning at Westchester University. To all the faculty and staff, thank you for being part of our community of educators. Thank you for the work you do every day, which extends far beyond your desk, your computer. It's going to impact the lives of 17,500 students, and we will have a long-lasting impact on the communities in which our students will ultimately work and live. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Osgood. Now I'd like to introduce Sherry Fishbach, Director of Autism Services at Westchester University and sophomore psychology major, Emma Billingsley. The president... <laughs> the president will be speaking to them about the Dub C Autism Program, which is helping the university to fulfill the personal and professional development priority of our new strategic plan. 
The WC Autism Program is just one of many WCU initiatives that is creating new personal and professional development opportunities for our students. Well, Sherry, Emma, it's great to have you here with us today. Thank you for joining us. Sherry, can you start by explaining the WC Autism Program a little bit, uh, how it impacts our students? Absolutely. So the WC Autism Program, also known as DCAP across campus, was developed two years ago to provide supports to our students with autism in efforts to increase our retention rates as well as our graduation rates, also to help with the gainful employment post-graduation. While these may be challenges for any of our students here transitioning to college, they can be greatly more challenging for our students with autism. In fact, when we first developed the program, we were one in 41 recognized university programs nationwide. Currently, we're one in 69. And it was difficult due to the fact that there isn't a lot of published research on how we could help this particular population in a university environment. However, what we did find were there were five key areas that our students uh, had requested for help. And we focused on those at DCAP. They include the executive functioning or that organizational time management piece, um, independent living and self-care, social competency, friendships across campus, self-advocacy, as well as employment readiness. In addition, we also help staff and faculty across the university in preparing for our students understanding autism and uh, with simple strategies to help them in their classrooms and in their, in their offices. The response to DCAP has been incredible. The need for these supports are apparent, considering if you look at our numbers, we started with four, and currently we have 30 members of DCAP, and one of whom happens to be Emma. So Emma, you're a sophomore, you're doing well in school, getting good grades, you're holding a job down on campus, and you have an active social life. Can you talk a little bit about how the DCAP program has helped prepare you to be successful at Westchester in your first year and then beyond? Yeah, well first I want to give a shout out to the seventh row back there, the DCAP <laughs> members with those signs. <laughs> I had to do it, but yeah. As a first year student last year, I was at DCAP basically every single day, anytime I could be there from Monday through, fr from Monday through Friday, and if there was something on a Saturday, I'd probably be there. Sherry probably got tired of me. She won't admit it, but she probably did. And you know, I just like to go there to study. You know, if I was bored, I would go there to hang out, and I made a lot of friends there. Um, Sherry and the grad assistants helped me a lot with um, how to manage my time, and I'm doing a lot better with that now. Um, how to write a resume. My resume is done for right now until I do something else. Right. <laughs> and mostly the DCAP helped me find my happiness and my place here at Westchester University. Um, I've never been happier than I ever was than I am right now. And it was nice to have such a judgment-free zone where people would be okay with me being who I am. And plus also at the beginning of the fall semesters, we would also visit places like the Writing Center, the Library, and the Lark to meet the staff and learn how they can help us. And tomorrow a group of students are actually going to the library. And these resources are especially important for those students who don't know what they can do for us on campus because they can do a lot and they've helped me so, so much my academics. And this year, I still go to DCAP three to five days a week. Um, I really enjoy attending the socials. I'm hoping to go to one tonight and coming. I also really enjoy going to group. And I also continue to make the friendships and maintain those friendships from last year. And my goal is to be a role model to those first year students who come into DCAP and just to be a role model for first year students in general as well. So um, it sounds like DCAP has really been a, tr a tremendous experience for you. <clears throat> Good job. <clears throat> so, Sherry, you made reference to, to how quickly things have been growing. So I know you and your grad assistants have been very busy. Where are we going from here with the program? Yeah. Well, DCAP is constantly evolving. Um, I know the odds are not in my students' favor um, upon graduations. Unfortunately, there's a daunting uh, stat that lingers above my head that indicates that 85% of our college graduates with autism are unemployed. However, I will say we're already beating those odds. 18 out of our 21 spring semester students had paid internships or employment opportunities or volunteering over the summer. So that's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Currently, 
We have students working in a variety of locations across campus. We have people working in the residence hall, such as Emma as a desk assistant. We have students working over at Sykes, uh, the student union, as well as Swope Music Library. Now, some of our students, however, have never been employed. They've never volunteered before. So another big announcement is we are excited to talk about the Ram Shop opening in January. So it will be located practically next door to another student initiative that you may be familiar with of Saxby's. Um, always busy over there with their coffee. And um, the difference between the Saxby's model and the DCAP model is we partnered with student services here on campus as well as the Control Business Center to open this convenience store that will serve as gifts and um, grab and go meals and things of such, but not just will be student run, it will also serve as an employment readiness program for our students of DCAP who have never had that experience before, which is a one of a kind um, across the entire country. So. <laughs> readiness program will help our students prepare them for the workforce while also providing our WCU students here on campus the experience in working with neurodiverse employees, co-workers, supervisees, and someday supervisors. So we, we rehearsed this but we did not rehearse all of the applause so this has been a delightful addition to but this this latest idea the Ram Shop sounds like a terrific risk to take Congratulations for the work that you're doing. Emma, congratulations for your success at Westchester Thanks. and best luck in the future. Thank you so much for joining us, Sherry and Emma. I know I personally can't wait to check out the Ram Shop uh, for myself later this January. Earlier backstage, Sherry was telling me that they'll stop grabbing go food and drinks, as well as Ram gear and other merchandise. So definitely make sure to check that out in January. Now to switch gears a little bit, we're going to talk about a project that falls under our sustainability priority of WCU's new strategic plan. It's a new iBook initiative that helps professors create their own e-textbooks, which they provide free of charge to their students. And yes, you did hear me right, I did say free. Now when you hear sustainability, you may think about the environment, but it's about much more than that. Here at WCU, we embrace a more broad definition of sustainability, which encompasses sustainability across all areas of our institution and in particular, financial, technological, and environmental sustainability. The third goal of this priority area is to improve financial and technological productivity, efficiency, and effectiveness through innovative systems, processes, and behaviors. And a free electronic textbook for our students definitely does that. So now, next to talk about this exciting new initiative, let's welcome to the stage Mark Drum, a senior instructional designer in distance education services, and Constant Case, and associate professors in the Department of Theater and Dance whose costumes and makeup designs have been seen at the Kenny Center, the National Archives, and many other prestigious venues. All right. <laughs> so, so Mark, I know having worked with you, you and your uh, team of instruct instructional designers have been doing great work in helping faculty develop online courses, online learning communities, this new initiative, this e-book, e-textbook initiative is, is a new idea. Can you talk a little bit about how that was developed and, and where it is? Sure, sure. Uh, about three years ago, I wanted to learn how to create an e-book. And I'm fortunate because Ray Lee, who heads up distance education, fosters an innovative work environment in which we're all encouraged to take on new opportunities. And Ray gave me some time to work on the design and coding side of things after all my other responsibilities were met. Uh, I wrote the book's content at home and at nights and on weekends, and uh, it's called 10 Ways Teachers Tame Twitter. And it looks at how faculty in higher education have embraced Twitter in the classroom. And much to my surprise, my book won Best iBook of the Year for the School Activities category at the 2016 iBooks Authors Conference. And that got me through. <laughs> Uh, that got me thinking, you know, what if I taught our faculty how to create e-textbooks? Well, congratulations on the, on the success of the book. That's fabulous. Thank you. So, Constance, have you ever written a textbook? I have not, and it was certainly more daunting than writing an academic article. Um, but when Mark spoke at the RECAP conference in 2017 about this new initiative, I knew that it was going to be really exciting and we'd get a lot of support from Distance Ed, so I signed right up. 
Um, given the kind of courses I teach, they're very practical, hands-on courses. The idea of a textbook that my students could interact with was really appealing to me. They can play audio and video. They can zoom in on an image by touching it. They can touch an image to get more information. They can rotate a three-dimensional image or even take quizzes to check how they're doing in their content. And I'm really proud that initiatives like this are an effective way to keep costs down for our students. 25% um, of our students are the first in their families to go to college. And more than 20% come from limited means. So it was really great the first day of class when I could say, guess what? You can get your textbook online for free. Well, I'm sure your students really appreciated that. Mark, can you tell us a little more? <laughs> are they out there? OK. <laughs> Can you tell us a little more about the, the pricing model associated with these uh, electronic textbooks? Sure. Uh, all of the faculty members who have signed up for the pilot they had to agree that they would provide their textbook to WCU students at no charge. Uh, they do own the rights to their books, so they are able to sell them online to the public if they choose to. Um, and we now have some early numbers for Constance's book, which replaced a $51 printed textbook, and collectively the 28 students in her course have saved $1,428 in textbook costs. So how do we build on this success? Where do we go from here? Uh, so for me, I'm going to do some revisions, get some feedback from my students. We're using it this semester in costume construction. And one of the really nice things about these e-textbooks is that you can do that. The book is finished, but now I can make some modifications to make it even better. And those are things that you just can't do with a paper text. So we have six faculty uh, representing five different programs in three different colleges. Uh, they're going to be using their new e-textbooks this year. And the entire distance education team has been involved in this project. Our other instructional designers, our online support specialists, they've worked one-on-one -on -one with faculty to help create their books. And now we're troubleshooting issues. And uh, our unit has committed to work with six more faculty to create e-textbooks for the 2019-2020 academic year. It's been very exciting to see this project grow. So if, if we find now that you've had this opportunity to, to promote this, that we have an, a, a huge outpouring of faculty who are interested in engaging in this, do we have the capacity to support a much larger group of faculty if they want to have these electronic textbooks? Yes, I think we do. Uh, these, the software that we use to create these books is available for free. Anybody can go and download it and learn how to create their own books with it. Well, that's fabulous. Well, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. being an early adopter. And thanks for being here today. While the university's previous strategic plan prioritized diversity, WCU's new plan now includes diversity and inclusion priority areas. You see, while anything that makes us unique is a part of our diversity, inclusion involves bringing together and harnessing these diverse and unique forces and resources in a way that's beneficial. The university is committed to creating opportunities to increase self-awareness of one's own uh, views and build awareness, knowledge, and skills towards diverse dimensions of our own identities. Here today to talk to us about uh, more about diversity and inclusion and perhaps get us out of our comfort zones in the process is Dr. Tracy Ray, WCU's, diverse, uh, WCU's diversity and inclusion officer. Thank you for that introduction, Rodney. I'm pleased to be here. Many of us, employees as well as students, set goals at the beginning of a new academic year. I encourage you to set goals as it relates to diversity and inclusion, getting out of your comfort zones, and taking advantage of the many opportunities available to you inside and outside of our classrooms, residence halls, and office spaces. I'd like to conduct a short exercise that might help you start thinking about diversity and inclusion in new and different ways. But first, when you hear the word diversity, what comes to mind? If only a few things like gender, race, and sexual orientation then I encourage you to expand your framework and begin thinking about this in much broader ways as diversity and inclusion goes well beyond these constructs. Consider what you know and don't know about the history and culture of others and keep in mind that one size does not fit all on our campus. No one wants to be stereotyped. So be willing to listen to others as well as share your own personal experiences. Cultural competence is a critical 21st century skill and when it, comes, when it comes to building cultural competence, mistakes will be made, 
but be willing to be vulnerable yet respectful when it, become, when it comes to interacting with others who are not similar to yourselves. Now, who here has ever watched Sesame Street? Anybody? One of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong, right? Remember that activity? <laughs> and what happens with the thing that doesn't belong? We traditionally what? Remove it, right? We take it out of the equation. Now, at the beginning of today's program, we were, I presented you with four puzzles. Was that an easy exercise? Pretty easy, right? Let's take a minute to look at the results. Hmm. Now, on Sesame Street, there was one answer. We're not getting one answer here. Many of you picked the third image, perhaps because it's the image that's hollow, right? That's not shaded. But I see many of you picked um, the triangle. Why? Because it has three sides. But I see some of you picked the last image. Why? Because it's the only image not on a point. It's on a plane. A lot of different ways to think about this. Let's look at our next set of images. Hmm. So I'm actually going to start with um, 25. So some of you might have picked 25. Why? Well, you were thinking about something. <laughs> OK, well, how about 43? Now, the math folks here might have picked 43 because you were quickly looking at square roots. Three, four, five. 43, you can't take a perfect square root, right? Some of you might have picked 16 because it's the only number that's even. And then many of you picked nine. But I bet you picked nine for different reasons. Some of you picked it because it's the only single digit. Others might have picked it because it's the only number that doesn't add up to seven. Ah, <laughs> third image. All right. Now, some of you, let's see. Again, math folks might have been looking at ratios of seven, one, seven, two, 14, seven, 49. So you pick three and 11 because it's not that perfect ratio. But many of you pick one and seven, maybe because it's only two digits, maybe because it's the only image that doesn't look like a clock. Ah. <laughs> All right, let's go to image number four. Okay, pretty simple. Wow, most of you pick flip-flops. <laughs> but not everybody picked flip-flops. Well, why did you pick flip-flops? Because you wear flip-flops in the summer and not in the winter? Well, I'm from North Carolina. I guarantee you we wear flip-flops in the winter. And I bet on this campus <laughs> in December, <laughs> I will still find somebody wearing flip-flops, exactly. But some of you picked the hat, maybe because it's the only one that's not a solid color. It has, a stri it has stripes. Some of you even picked the scarf, maybe because it's the only item that doesn't feel, fit on an extremity, okay? Not the head, not the hands, not the feet, fits in the middle, right? So I say this because on Sesame Street, it was one answer. It was about finding one solution. In today's world, it's not about finding one answer or one solution. It's about seeing the multiple possibilities. And that is why diversity is important. That is why diversity matters, okay? So one thing that you'll hear about more on our campus is cultural competency. And so cultural competence is the ability to function with awareness, knowledge, and interpersonal skills when engaging with people of different backgrounds, assumptions, beliefs, and behaviors. It's the ability to not just recognize and acknowledge those differences, but to value them, to value the many perspectives and experiences that people bring with them. So as you reflect on this activity, here are some things that I want you to note. One, Diversity is visible as well as invisible. We can't easily see all the ways that we are different. Two, inclusion recognizes that we all bring something to the table, including our different ideas and our different perspectives and lived experiences. And three, from Forbes magazine to Harvard University, study after study, time after time, demonstrates that diversity drives innovation, productivity, and the bottom line, profits. 
We must all be prepared to live and work with people who are different from ourselves. And as the university rolls out initiatives related to the strategic plan, I encourage you to consider how you will engage in efforts related to diversity and inclusion. I'm Dr. Tracy Ray, your Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer, and I look forward to working with all of you throughout this academic year. Thank you. Thank you. Community engagement has been a priority at Westchester University since the inception of our institution. Our new strategic plan calls on WCU to continue building mutually beneficial relationships with local, national, and international communities through the exchange of knowledge as a community resource and by supporting initiatives that uplift the common good. Last academic year alone, our campus community performed more than 712,000 hours of service via service learning programs and co-curricular activities. And let's just give that a hand for a moment because that's truly a great statistic. Personally, WCU's strong culture of service has had a significant impact on me because after I graduate this May, I plan to do at least a year of service before continuing on to graduate school. Now let's welcome to the stage two individuals who are here to talk to us about WCU's America Reads Youth Mentoring Program, and specifically its impacts at the Mountain Center, which under a different name started serving our community more than 100 years ago. Brad Stees is employed as the director of new, student, or new Directions at the Mountain Center, and he also is a WCU senior who is slated to graduate in May with a degree in social work. Kai Asbury is a graduate assistant in the Office of Service Learning and Volunteer Programs who coordinates the America Reads program at the Mountain Center and six other local area nonprofits. Well, welcome both of you today. <clears throat> so Brad, I understand that prior to coming to the Mountain Center and, and Westchester, uh, you were in the U.S. Army serving in the infantry in Afghanistan. So. <clears throat> We all thank you for your service. Now, you've made an interesting transition from the military to working with grade school children at the Melton Center and as the director of New Directions. Can you talk a little bit about the transition and how you've ended up in that position? Absolutely. So I understand that the theme of this event is taking risks. So while I may have gained leadership experience in the military, I had no experience with working with children in an academic setting. Um, this represented a whole new kind of stress for me. So <laughs> shortly after the military, I started the social work program here at, the, um, at Westchester University. And originally, I only wanted to work with veterans, but the dedicated faculty of the social work uh, department, who I believe are Out in the back, yeah, back row, <laughs> they, uh, they constantly encouraged me to seek out new experiences and um, take some risks. So as I mentioned, I had never worked with kids before. Um, it pushed me well outside of my comfort zone, but thankfully, through our partnership with the university and with America Reads, we were able to provide effective um, research-based and low-cost after-school programming to students in the Westchester Area School District. <clears throat> so the New Directions program is designed for students in K through sixth grade. It is an academic skill-building educational enrichment activity that often serves um, low-income low students and at-risk youth um, and all students who are members of the Westchester Area School District. Uh, some of our students also may lack role models, so I, I realize the impact that, that we can have um, on their lives. So at New Directions, we encourage our students to study. We encourage them to pursue healthy lifestyles and to participate in athletics and recreational activities. Um, there's a Frederick Douglass quote that is relevant to our mission at the New Directions program, and that quote is that, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Mm, that's powerful. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so Kai, it, it's clear that this program, that the, the, the uh, mentoring program, America Reads Youth Mentoring Program, more specifically, has had a powerful impact on the community. Can you talk about the benefit to the student mentors at WCU who are in this program? Yeah, so we provide our student mentors with a lot of support, which not only helps the development of their mentees, but themselves as well. In addition to the six to 10 hours they're doing on site, they also engage in professional development workshops right here on campus. We cover topics on behavioral management, uh, social identity training, and um, we also do some on resume and uh, interview prep too. 
at the end of the year, all our student mentors say they were more aware of the social problems that are right here in this Westchester community. And 90% of them say they're gonna recommend the new program to their friends and classmates. That's wonderful. And Brad, I understand that, that this is really just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the potential relationship between Westchester University and the Melton Center. Can you talk a little more about future directions for the partnership? That's correct. Uh, we're, we're grateful for the partnership. It's, it's no exaggeration to say that the Mountain Center would have a difficult time surviving without the support of uh, Westchester University and students, faculty, and staff. In fact, 85 to 90 percent of all of our volunteers come from, uh, come from the university. Wow. So we're extremely grateful for Westchester University's contribution as we work forward, uh, work toward our mission, which is to contribute to the um, well-being and quality of life for all people in the Westchester area. Well, thank you to both of you for participating today. I, I personally have a long history with the Melton Center, having worked with their board years ago, and I'm aware of, of the history that, that caused this organization to exist in its infancy. Uh, Westchester was a somewhat segregated community, and this, this started out as a response to that, but it has grown to be a much more powerful, impactful organization. So congratulations for your work, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. <clears throat> well, thanks to those of you who donated to the Resource Pantry food drive when you arrived. We're pleased to partner with Aramark to help restock WCU's Resource Pantry, which in the first two weeks of this semester provided 2,044 pounds of food to 181 different students. To put these numbers in perspective, during April and May of the spring semester, the pantry distributed 1,612 pounds of food. It's clear that the need for the resource pantry is critical and growing. If you didn't get a chance to donate today, you still have time. The resource pantry food drive concludes on family weekend, October 13th and 14th, and there are collection bins located campus-wide, including right here. <laughs> on a related note, for more than a dozen years, we've been presenting the WCU Civility Award to one individual each year who has made an exceptional contribution to our community. Civility is at the heart of all that we do and at the heart of everything that matters at Westchester University. This year's award winner epitomizes the theme of our Welcome Back event. This individual routinely extends herself beyond her prescribed job responsibilities. She takes risks to advance this university and its mission. To cite one example, Several years ago, our award winner began stockpiling toiletries and non-perishable food in a box under her desk. It was meant to take care of short-term needs for those she served, such as students having a tight few days before their next paycheck. Her coworkers and friends caught wind of this and started donating supplies. A range of on- and off-campus partners pitched in, and before you knew it, the WCU Resource Pantry was born. WCU currently enrolls more than 4,000 Pell-eligible students, including more than 30 students who are classified by the federal government as unaccompanied homeless youth. The Resource Pantry works to eliminate barriers to degree completion by providing access to basic necessities. This individual has created other programs to advance student success, such as the Promise Program, which offers support to at-risk students 365 days a year from access to housing during academic breaks to intensive mentoring. A letter of nomination notes, for some of the students she serves, she's the first person who has provided a parental role, providing care and support, but also boundaries and consequences. A student she serves says it all, she is our mama bear. It gives me great pleasure to announce the winner of the 2018-19 Civility Award, Tori Nuccio, Interim Associate Director in the Financial Aid Office. <laughs> now this is not Tori. Tori just delivered a baby girl. Just this past Saturday, and mother and daughter are both doing fine. So accepting on her behalf is her brother, WCU senior, Ethan Weijen. Congratulations. Thank you. 
Oh, Maria. <laughs> Maria, we forgot our gift. We have a little, a little Rams bib to send along with the award. So there we go. Thank you. As I said at the beginning of this event, every one of you is an integral part of this community of educators that makes up Westchester University. I wish we had time to tell more of your stories of how you are doing powerful things to affect positive change at this university. However, I don't want to keep you here all day, and there's a nice spread of food, of food waiting for us out on the quad. But before we head out, I'd like to single out one more member of the campus community for a bit of impromptu recognition. Raise your hands if you know the words to the WCU fight song. <laughs> Scott, you want to, you want to, let, let me hear it, Scott. <laughs> Scott, you have to, <laughs> do, do you know it? I know well, it. Well, you have to say it. Okay, okay go ahead, right now. Um, right there. Right there. With all your strength and might. No, you can't look. I'm not looking. Okay. <laughs> look at me. You can't keep it in two. <laughs> Okay. With all your strength and might, hey, win, we can. So here we go again. Hey, rah, 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 Westchester, you. That's it. That's good. All right, we have a, Not as good as them. We have a special gift for you. Oh, wow. Okay. Very good. So this is Scott Sherman from Human Resources, okay, and he's worked here a long time. I know that, 30, two years. 32 years. Well, congratulations thank on your you. school spirit, you. and we'd like to present you thank with this you. little token of our appreciation. Thank okay, thank you. you. Stay here. <laughs> so we, we want to try this all together. So I'd like the cabinet to come up on the stage. Sue, let's go. You're up here. Okay. And everyone else who helped make this event possible today. And by the way, I want to acknowledge them and thank them very much. A lot of people did a lot of hard work to make this thing happen today. Okay. All right, so we're going to practice, all right? Let's go. Everybody, everybody, let's do it again. Thank you, everybody. Thanks a lot. That was great.